sort of want to talk about the logic of what well, I think I titled this logic of meditation, but really in some sense, it's the logic of presence, the logic of the present moment. And we were just practicing that in our sit today, really being present with the breath. We're constantly time traveling and it's disorienting to our body. I think you could imagine that, right? I think I can imagine some I, some uh, time travel movies. I don't know which ones come to mind, or maybe it's some books where people start to get lost in time when they travel time travel too much, right? In these science fiction, they're like, oh, wait, where do I? You can have this experience even if you just travel around the world a lot, right? I don't know if any of you have had a travel life for a while, but you can start to be like, wait, where am I? Where am I again? What what bed am I in? What uh, What time zone am I in? What? What language am I supposed to be speaking, right? You can have that experience. But we do that actually to ourselves all the time. We're constantly time traveling. The mind, many of you have seen my diagram of, of the sort of structure of meditation, where at the top is narrative reality. Right? The top is the reality we live in, which is really the story we're constantly telling. It's not reality reality. It's the story of reality that we're telling. It's the movie of reality. And so we're we're constantly time traveling. We're moving into the future and worrying about what's going to happen in 10 minutes or an hour or a, a day or 10 years. Or usually we're worrying about some fictional event that will never happen, right? But it still is placed in the present. I mean, in the future. And so we're, we're, we're leaving this present moment experience. We're leaving our present moment body and we're moving it in. We're transporting it into a future experience. Or we're doing the same thing with the past, right? We are leaving this present moment or just taking a little bit of it and then running back into something that's happened to us in the past. Something that usually has some emotional content and therefore makes, you know, makes it a place we need to go back to a lot. Does this make sense? You see, this is how the mind works. The mind isn't about the present moment, not the, not the narrative mind. It can't be about the present moment because it's got to tell a story about the present moment. Even if we're analyzing, even if we're using the mind to solve a present moment problem, which by the way, can feel a lot better. Those of us who do like a crossword puzzle or you know, if we're doing really well on a test or you know, even, I'm trying to think of other, there's lots of, you know, we use our mind in rock climbing or in sports or in, you know, those are very, much more, present moment experiences but there's mind parts of that but even those the mind parts of those experiences are not in the fully in the present moment they're working towards a solution in the future or they are analyzing a problem from the past when we do that with our breath for instance so i'm paying attention to my breath i'm very present on the breath but then i'm like ah but my breath is a little shallow it should i wish it were a little deeper the second you do that you've moved You've disconnected from the present moment, right? You noticed it was, however it was, shallow a second ago, but then you started talking about it, and now you are in the past, right? You are talking about the past and trying to fix the past. And in fact, you're now talking about the past with an eye towards the future where your breath will be better, right? So even, you know, in those, those moments when we're meditating and the mind comes in, the second the mind comes in, we leave the present moment. Now, that kind of mind activity doesn't feel nearly as, as um, disorienting to our nervous system as the mind activity where we're jumping into tomorrow or, you know, back 10 years. This is hard on our nervous system. Now, part of it's hard because we're usually thinking about something, we're usually thinking about something bad that's going to happen or has happened or how we don't have something good. You know, often that's what our mind is thinking. So that's just an intrinsically tension-inducing aspect of the mind, that it's very good, bad-oriented, very judgment-oriented. But it's also just intrinsically disorienting to the nervous system to not be here. The nervous system want, is going, hey, look at all this. This is where we are. And the mind is going, nope, that's not where we are. It's a, there's a conflict, right? There's just all this information. The nervous system was designed 
fine-tuned over tens of millions of years through multiple species lines, right? To really get us a good understanding, a really amazing contact with what's happening right now. And then the mind came along and said, you know, what would be useful is to know what's going on in the future, yeah? And to be remember things in the past. And it was right, that is very useful, but it's a whole different, um, modality than what the rest of our nervous system was trained to do. So when we only live in the mind, we're constantly arguing with our base with our body, with our basic nervous system. We're constantly saying we're it's like we're gaslighting our body to use a very present moment term, right? We're saying you're not here. Yeah, you're, you're not you think you're here, but you're not actually here. And yeah, gaslighting is uncomfortable, right, for people, right? It makes us feel unseen and unheard. And so our body feels unseen and unheard all the time. Just, I want you to think about it. It's all the time. When the mind is in control, the body will feel unseen and unheard. And eventually it will get back. It'll, it's, it's, it will eventually, you're, you're all, you it's the foundation for all your experience it will get back at you <laughs> it will make itself be heard in the mind what will it do so as the body starts to make itself be heard by generating feelings of anxiety or sadness or anger or frustration or by ultimately very likely causing illness and like a pain and discomfort in the body as it does that the mind will still be going okay what out there is causing this in here and then how do i go in the future fix that thing out there so that i'll feel better in here and again sometimes this is true but most of the time in our life and I'm not really talking about particular illnesses, though this definitely can happen with with our with with sickness. But I'm talking about mainly our emotional life. <clears throat> we don't really heal our emotional life by focusing on the external. We can get help from the external, and sometimes our emotional life is relational, so we need to have a relational experience to heal it but we need to come into contact with our present moment body either way and it has to be in the present even if we need to heal something relationally it needs to be a present moment relational experience we need to see the other seeing us does that make sense am i getting too complicated so what do we do in med so what's the logic of meditation and the logic of presence. The logic of presence is, it's it's so simple. It's really important to notice. I think all of us here really know what I'm talking about, but I'm just gonna articulate it because it's one of the simplest things. And yet I've realized recently, it's been so long since I didn't, I wasn't aware of this, that I, I, I just was like, I was sort of remembering what it was like to not, Notice the distinction between being here in the mind and being here in the present sens sensation. The difference, and you can just notice it right away. There's the breath, right? The second you feel the actual coolness of the breath, that is different than thinking about the breath. It's just a different type of experience. And the one is not bad. It's just we're stuck in it right so it's not the mind is not bad it's very useful and it's actually happening in the present moment but what we do is we go inside of it and get lost in its story rather than realize we're watching the movie but there's a concrete difference between sensing the breath and thinking about the breath And there are degrees of it, but you can notice the difference. Has everyone here noticed that difference? Yeah. Do you, can you remember a time when you didn't really know there was that difference? 
I don't know. Maybe maybe we've all had that. But most of us, I think, don't really realize that we're always thinking about the thing. We're not actually having the thing. So the second we can now, so now what's meditation? Meditation is the, once you know that difference, once you know there's a difference there, there's degrees of it, right? So we can get all the way under the mind. But once we just notice we can get under some of the mind and the difference between that, then we just keep moving our attention back to the present experience. And you'll start to notice the body rewards you or the body says sighs. The body goes, oh yeah, there's just a calm that starts to come. It doesn't mean you feel perfectly or that you are overwhelmed with bliss, though that can happen, right? Real joy can happen when you start to feel the present moment for the first time in years. But the body calms down. Why? Because the body is now here. <laughs> Instead of being jerked around in a false timeline, it gets to actually be here. This is simple, one of the simplest ways of thinking about what we're doing with at least the mindfulness part of meditation. We're just taking a break from our incessant need to time travel. The mind is often telling us that nothing right here is important, except in as much as it's going to cause something in the future. Do you see how, like, again, like gaslighting is a good word here, how crazy making that is? This isn't important. This is not important. It, it, well, that might be important, but only because it's going to cause that over there, right? Right. And if you can just stop doing that for a second, and 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 you start to let go of that belief, right, that nothing right here is important. That's sort of one of the key beliefs that we we are going to have to loosen up around. What if? And you've heard me say this before. What if this is the point of your life? This moment. The mind has saw these stories, so it can't connect that right away. It can't be, well, how could that be? Well, why couldn't, what, you have some other idea of an experience, right? That's, the, that's what's going to make your life important, right? Your mind has some story. When my life gets to here, then everything will be made proper, right? Whatever it is. But that's just another experience. Why couldn't it be this experience? Why couldn't this experience be the point of your life? Why couldn't everything have been leading to this? You know why? Because this is literally what everything has been leading to. <laughs> like that's actually true. Everything has been leading to this. Everything you've ever done or felt or, or seen or experienced or even really in some sense thought about has been leading to this moment. Now, it's not leading in the same way that the mind thinks of it as leading, but it's leading in the real way, the true way. This is where we are now. Your body's trying to tell you that all the time. I do want to be careful there because the body stores thoughts. Like Thoughts are not separate from the body. So thoughts in the body will be telling us the past and the future as well. But there's our, our sensory system is constantly in contact with the present moment. Okay, so that's that's a little talk on the logic logic of presence. And it's a really useful thing to notice. And once you've noticed it, then you under you can understand what we're doing in meditation. There's other things we can do in meditation and there's other ways to approach it. But this is a really good way to go. Well, when I'm sitting down, what do I try to do? I just try to keep contacting the present moment. And it doesn't need to be the breath. It could be anything. As long as you are sensing something in the present moment, you could be feeling the breath or you could be seeing that tree or you could be hearing that bird or you could be hearing your thoughts, hearing them as a sound, or seeing your thoughts as a picture, or feeling your emotions as a feel. Those are all in the present moment too. But you need to be contacting them as sensory, not lost in the narrative. 
coming into this present moment is to sense the present moment. To have this conversation with you, I could be lost in what I am trying to do. I could be lost in the story of what I'm saying. Or I can just be hearing the words coming out of my mouth as I see your faces. Then I'm present with you. And I'm present with myself. Now, that's a more advanced form of mindfulness because there's so much mind that seems to be happening. But one can experience it without being lost inside of it. And it's almost as if I can see this image on the screen. It doesn't, it's it's not me or, you know, it's just a thing that's happening of myself and you. There are, there are ex an experience that's happening together. Okay. Thank you, Facebook and or YouTube for stopping by. Uh, we have this class every week on Saturday morning. You're welcome to join us in Zoom class because we're going to turn off the recording here and, and have some discussion and uh, a little bit of community. A reminder, this is a by donation class. Um, no donation is required. I, I, I would rather you watch this and listen to this if it is useful to you than not. But if you uh, feel moved to give a donation, it is greatly appreciated and helps me to keep making these videos. Um, so you can give a donation if you want to. Otherwise, I will see you next week. Much love.